Hello, we're local clinicians. This is Ali Nassay, and I just received the Journal of Endodontics uh, March edition. This is volume 41, number three, uh, March 2015. And there were three specific articles in there that I thought that were interesting, and I wanted to share them with you. So just a quick summary and a quick little tutorial to go over these articles. Uh, the first one is the effect of obturation techniques on the push bond strength of calcium silicate sealers. And that is by Christopher DeLong et al. And that's from Baylor University. There is also another one that's a very significant one uh, from Pennsylvania. And that's the healing after root and microsurgery by using metal trioxide aggregate and a new calcium silicate based by ceramic material as a root end filling material in dogs. And that is by Chen Ian Chen et al. And the main investigator on that is uh, Dr. Singa Kim. And lastly, the color stability of calcium silicate uh, based materials in contact with different irrigation solutions. And um, that is basically about the staining of biceramics and different biceramics. So in this volume, the first article, The Effect of Obturation Techniques on the Push Bond Strength of Calcium Silicate Sealers, uh, these guys, what they did is they basically took 50 teeth and they uh, obturated them using the uh, bice endosequence BC sealer with a single cone technique that we've been basically talking about at the uh, Rewald Endo, as well as the uh, vertical condensation technique using heated uh, continuous web of condensation, and then compared it with another uh, biceramic, which is MTA plus sealer. Uh, and they used that one also in a single cone as well as the uh, vertical condensation uh, technique, and uh, these uh, four were compared with the standard AH plus with vertical condensation technique, uh, you know, continuous wave of condensation technique, and their findings were fairly interesting. Actually, the endosequence BC sealer as a single cone performed the best, uh, and the even in hydraulic, even with the vertical condensation, it was uh, not significantly worse. So it was basically the same, but obviously, if the single cone and the vertical condensation performed the best, the simpler technique, which is the one cone, would probably be adequate. Uh, what was interesting is that the other techniques with MTA plus uh, were not uh, quite as good in terms of the push bond strength. Now, just a quick little um, sidebar. Uh, the push bond strength tests are um, basically show that the bond of the sealer and the material to the dentinal walls. Uh, by ceramics do create a bond with the hydroxyapatite component of dentin and therefore they do create a bond um, and push bond strength is higher in these uh, types of sealers uh, but apparently this uh, was not quite as high in the MTA plus and the reason why I think is because many of these newer formulations of the bioceramics are not as pure as the uh, calcium silicate calcium phosphate based endosequence BC sealer uh, because the newer formulations add resins to uh, hydrophilic resins to the to the sealer in order to manipulate it and make it maybe a little bit easier to uh, to handle or to have it cure the downside of that is that the resins increase the cytotoxicity and decrease the biocompatibility of the materials. And at the same time, they actually bind the biceramic particles and they prevent them from actually bringing on the benefits of biceramics, which is, um, you know, all the stuff with the biocompatibility as well as 